Especially how last episode ended with Domas, Daida, everything. I have to find out what happens to Boji and I have to find out what happens to Daida. I'm way too invested. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with Ranking of Kings, episodes 5 and 6. This first one is called Intertwining Plots. We ended off last episode with uh, Domas pushing Boji, the best-hearted, most kind-hearted person in the world, into the fiery pits of purgatory, supposedly. And then we, meanwhile, we have Dida opening the Pandora's box, talking to the magic mirror on the wall, claiming the power of his deceased father. So all in all, shit's you know going down. And then we have Bebin who tried to kill APS due to Dida's orders. And we also have orders that Boji needs to be killed. We also met the crazy someone under a, a pitfall trap. You know, I don't know. Things are just super weird. And this show in the world building is crazy. I need to hop into it and find out what happens because I'm way too eager. Don't forget if you guys want early access or full length to this show and all the other shows I'm watching, there are four episodes ahead on Patreon. Links are down in the description down below. Like always, don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Follow all the social medias, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, all at Dapper Darius. Much appreciated, y'all. Let's hop into this. Ranking of Kings, episodes five and six. The first one is called Intertwining Plots. Let's do this. Is this Boji waking up in the hole? I'm surprised he even survived that. It looked like literally a never ending fall and he didn't even fall that deep. And there's a piece of rope. And I like how Domas waited for the flames to be spewing as well. What is in that bag that it just automatically shot an arrow at the wall like that, saving our fall? That crossbow is clutch. Because if I remember, our bag did get stolen for a second and then returned to us. So. Oh, I know. Oh. Such a good feeling knowing your friend is still alive when he thought he was dead. You're going on this journey for him. He's in there. He saved your life. Oh, come on. Come on, Kage. I'm telling you, such a sweet kid. Oh, he even got Kage tearing up. He's just, he's just ecstatic. He's, just, they're both just overwhelming with emotion. That's adorable. Okay, now we gotta go kill Domas. All right, episode five, intertwining plots. Good. I didn't know that. Really? Even from then? Oh, is he the one who helped? I was, I was like, that is a squishy ass bag. I was like, that's really saved our fall. It was Kage. Wait, wait. So I thought it was Bebin who had poison laced uh, kunais and that poisoned the meat. But Kage did the kunais to save him from eating the already poisoned meat. Who, which, who gave us this meat? I don't think it was Hakuro, so the only one I could really guess is Domas. And he was up, not upset, but, you know, his assassination attempt didn't work, so he's just going to push him into the flames of purgatory? Really? I don't know what he's plotting either. I thought Bevan was against Boji, but... Makes sense. It actually, to fool the enemy, start with your ally. Oh, that's... <laughs> I actually like that. We can go even further down. That, that's not. Oh, there's stairs. What is this, Mordor? Yeah, what is this, Maiden Abyss? I Normally, people that are down in the crazy areas like that are not <laughs> cool. So, this had to be previously. Before they left on their expedition. I somewhat respect that he's saying this, even though he voted for him, you know. You are supposed to stick with the person you're with, you know. It's that loyalty. I like that. But you betrayed my expectations, even though voting for me, you know, you still didn't do what you were supposed to do. Stick with your loyalty, and so. I actually kind of somewhat respect that. That's one thing about Daida. Even though he's a douchebag, and he is egotistical, I, I can go on for a list, you know. For like 10 minutes about what he is he has these certain mentalities and traits that really remind me of bakugo even though bakugo was very similar to him in terms of his ego in terms of his overconfidence cockiness he 
wants to prove that like he, he it's like there are some people out there with that like a good example would be pax from mushoku tensei who is very similar in terms of his very aggressive personality but doesn't have anything to back it up versus daida who actually is putting in work and actually like is sh scolding and shunning domas for what he's doing because he's not being loyal to the person he's supposed to be loyal to even though he's being loyal to daida right now and he's saying he can't it's like it's like when you betray your people and try to join the enemy team, it's like, why would the enemy team trust you? You just betrayed your own people to join the enemies, you know, like it never make, you know, so I completely get that. And when the magic mirror was telling Dida, hey, we should go get your father's power, this, that, and the other, he was like, why? I want to do it with my own power, you know, so he can like actually know deep down in his own mind, he needs his self gratification. It's not just about what other people think as well, which I think is where the root of why I respect it is. It's all for his own personal belief and his own goals. I like that. I have come to a decision, uh-huh, for the sake of the people. And of course, uh, Domas is trying to earn his way back now, so he's going to work extra hard. He is so conflicted right now. He's actually horribly sad as and regretful of what he did. But the idea of politics and what's the right thing to do when he was the one... And I didn't even mention this, which also actually makes me kind of like him a little bit more and respect his co conflict in his mind, is that when he was talking to Hakuro last episode, he was saying, hey, we are beneath the people who are smart enough to make these decisions on the totem pool. So because of that, we don't even have the right to, uh, to question their orders. Don't take anything with a grain of salt. If they say you jump, you ask how high, you know, so knowing that pre-context for domas before this it makes a lot of sense his inner self it's like the devil and angel thing his inner self will say bro don't you dare touch this sweet little kid don't do it but then the political side the, this that and the other like the, literally the devil was like you know do it you know and he he ended up going with the devil that controversy in his heart is really good gas That gas is gonna knock you out. Someone on a horse is pulling up. These look like the underworld knights that Domas was talking about last episode. You're just now asking this? A sworn ally. You are so crazy, Daida. This is obviously an arch nemesis or enemy of your father who is seeking revenge. Like, this is literally like, come on. Whoa, we got two Grim Reaper Scythe guys with masks watching over this gate. Holy shit. It's like a refrigerator. It's like a freezer for ancient mythical creatures. There are a number of things preserved in here, and at the very head of them is Bose's body. He's preserving his own body? Why? May I ask? All for this very moment, really? And can we still talk about what the devil was that came out of his lungs when he died? St why are we doing a jack-in-the-box? They're gonna grind his body up into... What are they gonna turn him into a fucking smoothie? You could tell me that's gonna make me into Superman and I'm not drinking my dead dad's physical body. When I said this was like Attack on Titan, I guess I wasn't joking. It even has Aaron as a fucking voice actor during this too. Meanwhile, APS is going down. Are these the same stairs? This is him training. Balsa is there as well. Those are the... Oh, who is this? Because those are the two same Grim Reaper scythe wielders that are now servants of Balsa. APS was able to kill this hippogriff type creature. Dope. Oh, when you think about it, I don't know why I just thought of this, but those two same Grim Reaper Scythe people who were with Balsa, then during like APS's little flashback a second ago, then we were with that hooded figure girl with like a little mark on her chest, little, mm, that's easily the magic mirror. How did I not think of that? I'm an old ally of Balsa, so and talking about, yeah, so and of course, okay, makes a lot more sense now. So that figure thinking, now when I see her in the flashbacks, I'm gonna think that's magic mirror and it's gonna be crazy. Okay, it's a very fast-growing chicken into a bird, into a hawk, into a flaming hawk. 
which they restrain quickly into this cage-like structure. What the hell is going on, guys? What am I watching? And from out of its ashes is rebirthed anew. The jewel of resurrection is retrieved. What the hell? Add it to the holy blood. Yeah, ain't no way in hell I'm drinking this. Purple smoke steam is literally emanating from the top. Yeah. In any of these shows or scenarios in which this same thing is going on, they never say, yeah, but are there any side effects or any, are any downsides at all? No? Only power? Good. I might have said that before they turned your dad's body into mush, but hey. Think about what Bevan's saying. It's never an easy path. You have to work hard. Yes. But more importantly, by yourself. Don't be a blind devotee to some crazy religion. I actually am pleasantly proud of uh, Daida this episode. He's like, hey, where, where'd Boji go? He was, he was just with you. Yeah. That doesn't answer my question at all. What do you mean he's gone? Can we get some clarity? Yes, Hakuro. He killed him. The cursed gas didn't kill him, so it really is intended to kill. I thought it was like knockout gas. Oh my, the two of them are already cursed. The first one is a giant who had his powers taken. Is that why he's so small compared to his giant mom and dad? I didn't even know giants were a race in this. That's fucking dope. And the other one is a shadow clan member who's taken a form and who has been met with divine disfavor. I'm so curious who these people are and what his crown is compared to Boji. Oh. You're bullshit, yeah? He knows immediately. This is gonna be wild. Ooh, even though he has no chance, I respect it. For the honor of Boji. I respect it. That was his that was his duty, his I respect this man to the utmost now. Domas is gonna kill him. Oh, oh. He just tanked it. He's doing this as atonement. He I mean he could have easily killed Hakuro, we know that. And he didn't even cut his hand clean off. It's like his half is like half off and he's going to finish it. Especially for a swordsman. That's the ultimate. I don't want to say disgrace, but like the ultimate like, oh shit, you know, I assume his right hand's his dominant hand as well. That was pretty crazy. I can't lie. All right. That was a crazy ass episode. This one is episode six called the king of the underworld, who I'm assuming is down there with Boji right now. I'm very curious. Speaking of, here we are. Des, come on, remember his name right now, Kage. We need you. I assume so. Ranking second place, Desha. He's second. Oh my God. I am Desha, King of the Underworld. Yes, his test is strength. Eh. Yeah, uh, against big dude? How, what, how? Okay. Hells yeah, look at this little kid. That's the captain, yeah, of the Order of the Underground. The strongest knights around, right? Well, I mean, I heard about them, that's how you know they're strong. To start by trying to hit him. And he goes in for a little swing. Oh, look at this. I know, I'm like him. He's just like... Mm, this is so embarrassing. This is so sad. 
He just doesn't have any physical strength. But that's why we came to you for, Desha. We have the other things, you know. But the thing is, like, comparing this king or captain of the underworld to Dida might be a little crazy. That we were able to dodge Dida. I don't know how well we'd be able to dodge him. I love the way they animated that. My man is really good at dodging. Shouts out to David in the comments. I don't know if you're watching this. I always call him Boji the Sidestep King. Because that is what he is. Now you're getting him wanting to go a little hard out. You wanted to get him to start trying. Yep. Yep. Look at him. Ooh. I love the way they animate this show. Oh my god. It's beautiful. He really is the Dodge Lord. Look at that. Oh my god. This kid's not even breaking a sweat. <laughs> Impressive. Hell yeah. He feels souped right now. That's my boji. Desha's still not impressed. It's a fair question. That is sad, man. I, I love Kage so much standing up for his boy. From Hilling, right? No, we, she, I know Hilling gave it to us, but we didn't even read it? What does it say? Throw them out? And he ripped it so we don't have our letter anymore. Oh, Bodhi feels like, oh, no. <laughs> Lift up what we can. Come on, you got this, my man. You got this. I have faith. Come on, Boji. Come on, Boji. Put those knees in. Oh. Feeling powerless and helpless is such a... Especially in Boji scenario, it can feel so frustrating, man. I can't. I literally can't even picture it. Yeah, he's trying to put on a, a, a brave face. Especially with all the expectations and pressure that's put on him, you know, like it only hurts even more. Really? Oh, Despa. Antagonistic streak, that is funny. Well, thank you, Captain of the Order of the Underground. I appreciate you, sir. I love that little <laughs> song they played, too. It's like we got an achievement or a new item. Oh, I love that. This show has such great vibes, like in terms of art style, animation, soundtrack, character design. The great city of the underworld. Meanwhile, we're back in the underground cavern, trying to deal with Dida and the magic mirror. Look at a young little chubby Dida. I don't know that he's been jealous of Boji, but he's always seen that Boji's had a different lifestyle than him. And I do think there's a hint of envy there, hint of jealousy. I'm curious as to what that is, though. And when there was a final straw when they read Bose's will and he chose Boji as the king. He's, he's... Here comes Apius, the one you ordered to have killed. And so Apius follows the mirror's orders, and he was really about to take Dida's throat out. He recognizes Lady Miranjo. Miran, Miranjo. Yep, she's the one who was training in front of her, or he was in training in front of her. That woman who was the hooded figure who was preserved, that's her body probably. I still get shocked every time I see Bolsa. I'm going to change you. Is that what changed him from this nervous man that we've seen in these two flashbacks? Like the stoic, cold-hearted. He did the he did the thing, and he drank the the blood of the head of this. Oh no, that was a bird. It was, what happened to the hippogriff? It was a hippogriff, and then some, I'm curious. Oh, 
よどうかお許しくださいそう簡単に信用できるかありがとうございます That was quite the fucking punch. That's knocking anyone out. So now are they going to force feed the solution to him or what's going to happen? Oh, we're not even going to get the conclusion of that story right now. Back in the city of the underworld. This looks like fucking Halloween town. They're cleaning up the bird blood and they are re... Always a glow. Oh, Bebin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Lady Miranjo. Let's see what happens when he drinks the, the blood. What's it gonna do? Are you not gonna... I'm so, I hate when animes do this. They do it all the time. Oh. Okay, Despa. Okay, tell me why he sounds like... Voice actor is that? Hold on, I recognize that voice actor. Oh. oh no, I recognize his voice actor super. Hold on, let me hear that one more time. I actually think that might be Hisoka's voice actor. All right, so after a brief, very brief, I need to go even deeper into it, um, voice actor list that I was able to look up. It looks like um, the voice actor for... So for Apius, the voice actor, I really know him as Bjorn from Vinland Saga. I know him as Elhart from Rising of the Shield Hero and King from One Punch Man. You love to see it. The voice actor for... So the voice actor for Despa, who I was really curious at the end there, is the voice actor for Griamore, Seven Deadly Sins, Fitzgerald, Francis Scott, where that's where I mainly recognize him, from uh, Bungo Stray Dogs. But he's also licked from Black Clover, so that's also super where I recognize him, which is insane. I love the range of some of these voice actors. It literally blows my mind. And then Hakuro, who I really, really enjoyed this episode, is the voice actor of a character in 86, which I really like, and Deku, which I really, really enjoy as well. I'm very excited to see more of these characters in action to see their motivations because like i said this is, seems like one of those shows where i'm going to get thoroughly invested into it like i'm gonna love these characters and hate some of the decisions they're making i'm gonna hate the characters and love some of the decisions they're making like i am not the biggest fan of dida but i respected him a lot these last couple episodes for wanting to prove his own worth and his own potential and not wanting to do any cheap under shorthanded methods you know like bevan said there's no easy path for the for the for the right journey for the right way but um damn what, what happened with domas i feel his controversy i feel his confliction in his in his moral area because of how much he likes and respects boji but how much he thinks he's not worthy but he's not saying he's not worthy and like an ill intent he's just like damn i really i th he i think he truly does believe that the burden of being king would be a little too much for boji to bear so he thinks dida would be better off being the king which it gets complicated man i can't blame you you know like it's all subjective who you think is going to be a better king you know like there are some objectiveness to it because there's a ranking of kings you know you, who has the most followers who has the strongest this that and the other but it is also pretty subjective and then we have miranjo and apius who are now re-squatted up and i wonder what she did to him and what she's going to do to dida she's it's not an elixir that's going to make you all powerful she was lying to him which obviously but us meeting um desha and then we're gonna meet despa as well we just met despa at the end the he's ranked two like he's all these kings man we already met that crazy king who i thought was a king a couple episodes ago in the fucking forest who tried to turn crazy and eat us and with the i don't know this show is crazy man in terms of the soundtrack character design animation action emotional weight and comic relief this show is hitting every category like really well it's not even like it does it decently like it's hitting really well if you guys enjoyed please leave a like let me know your thoughts down below don't forget to subscribe click that bell uh join the dapper squad hey follow that patreon all that check out early access full length don't forget to drink some water tell someone you love them have a great day dapper squad peace